The POM LCM from Carl Zeiss is a laser capture microdissection system capable of isolating tissue samples from a subcellular level, typically using a fixed tissue from a microscope slide, but also possibly from fresh tissue or live cells. The POM LCM system is built around Zeiss's flagship inverted motorized microscope, the Axio Observer. The ability to use this microscope as a laser microdissection system is provided by the inclusion of a 355 nanometer pulsed UV laser that is introduced through the rear port of the microscope. By focusing this laser on the sample and moving the stage, it is possible to locally ablate tissue in a manner that permits for isolation of regions of interest. A defocused pulse of laser is then applied, causing the generation of highly localized plasma at the interface between tissue and slide, propelling the tissue off the slide and into the collection tube. To begin the operation of the POM system, turn on the associated computer and components. The order of powering up the system does not matter, however all components should be powered on prior to starting the software. The fluorescence illumination may be powered independent of other components. If fluorescence imaging is to be done, be sure to power on the fluorescence light source. With the hardware powered on, find the Robo software icon on the desktop of the acquisition PC and start the software. The hardware will initialize, during which time the motorized stage will move to the extreme upper left and then return to the center position. As the Robo software initializes the hardware, let's take stock of the microscope. Step 1 on the transmitted light arm of the microscope above the condenser are a series of neutral density filters. They should remain in place while using the system in order to make it easier to find appropriate exposure times with transmitted light samples when switching between objectives. Step 2. The cap mover or robo mover should have a sample capture device in place. The capture device simply sits in place with the magnetic holder and is auto-identified by the system. You can now load your sample of interest onto the stage. Samples should not be cover slipped and the tissue that is isolated should be on top of the microscope slide when placed on the stage with the tissue facing up. Placing your sample on the stage involves holding back the spring clip in the position of interest then placing the slide and re releasing the spring clip. Your system was delivered with some standard slides prepared by Zeiss Labs. If this is your first time using the POM LCM, I suggest you start with those samples. With all these checks made, we can start to control the system through POM Robo Software. A proper startup should display this Robo Software window in a live image from the color camera. We will additionally want to control the stage movement with the navigation window. We'll want to view the list of items that we will be cutting, and we'll want to control the capture device. All of these can be opened under the View option on the file menu bar, or you can use the shortcuts F4, F5, and F12. Arrange the control windows to your comfort. I suggest the following arrangement is most convenient, with the navigation directly to the right of the main window and the elements list below the main window. On the left side of the RoboSoftware main window, set the light intensity to 3200 Kelvin. With the neutral density filters in place and 3200 Kelvin light intensity, the auto exposure of the color camera should permit us to change between objectives without having to adjust the light intensity. This makes for an easy workflow when navigating your sample. Because laser capture microdissection is often an entirely new experience, let's start with a simple demonstration of what you should expect when isolating tissue. I have a capture tube in place and will click on the graphic of that tube in the capture device control window. This will move the tube into place over the sample. From here we simply draw a shape around the portion of the tissue that we want to isolate and then press on the cut button. Using this particular type of sample where the tissue is mounted on the membrane covered slide, the cut proceeds from the outside of the drawn region of interest and a defocused laser pulse catapults the sample into the capture tube. We can view the sample isolated in the capture tube by clicking on the check cap button on the capture device window. It's best to use the lowest possible magnification when checking the cap to speed the finding of the sample. Clicking on the check cap button will provide, move the stage to a position where the microscope slide is out of the light path and the objective should be automatically focused on the capture cap. Click on the same check cap button, which now has a red X through it in order to return to the regular stage placement and resume isolation of tissue.
Now that you understand what to expect with the laser capture micro dissection, let's take a few steps backwards and walk through the software interface and how to optimize the laser capture process. To the left side of the main window, you will see the microscope and camera controls. Below the live image, you see the drawing controls for identifying regions of interest that you would like to isolate from the sample. On the right side of the live image, you see the controls for your cut laser power and focus. We will discuss these cut laser controls in more detail shortly when we optimize the laser cutting. Moving the other windows, the navigation window allows us to move between samples by clicking on the slide of interest or by moving large distances within that slide. We can also generate a preview of our slide by defining the top left and bottom right of the region of our slide that we'd like to image, and then scanning this region with the Scan ROIs button. The result can be seen in the higher magnification under the Scan tab. Here you can further navigate to a region of interest, but with the added benefit of being able to see your full tissue. If you're using a higher power objective or scanning a large region, you may want to enable the autofocus or manual focus pause before running the scan. Moving on to the Elements window, below the main window here, you can see all of the details of the elements we've drawn. An element is the terminology that RoboSoftware uses for a region of interest that is to be cut and catapulted. Note that the elements are displayed in the individual lists for each slide. Note that once the element is drawn, clicking on the Cut button will process all the elements by default, not only the element that is selected. Before we begin the cutting process, we can refine the cut list if we like. Double-clicking on an element will allow us to change the properties of the cutting that is to take place. This can include the color of the element used for purposes of creating cut groups, for example, of regular and diseased tissue. You may also find it necessary to change the objective to be used for cutting or the type of cut to be made. More on this type of cutting in a moment. Finally, the elements can be directed to different capture devices. By default, this is set to manual and the capture device's place is used. But individual elements can be specified for different capture tubes, and the capture device will move appropriately when the tissue isolation is taking place. Note that when you have a large list of elements, you can use typical Microsoft Quick Keys to select multiple entries, such as Control Click or Shift Click, and the properties of all selected elements will be changed at once in the main elements window. We've already used the collector window and have seen how we can select the different capture devices by clicking on the graphic. Because moving the capture cap into a place changes the optics of the light path, there is also a diffuser element that can be used to mimic the effect of a capture device. This is the central yellow circle. While it's not necessary to use this, it will give you a more representative image. The check cap button has been described and there is a button to return the capture device to the home position. This stop allows us to cancel on all functions of the capture device largely as a safety measure. The capture device may be positioned further manually using these other controls, but this should not be necessary and should not be attempted when initially learning to use the system. Returning to the main window, let's now discuss how to further navigate by controlling the stage, how to optimize the laser cutting process, and then what the different types of laser cutting are. There are a number of ways to navigate on the sample. We've already seen that we can navigate in a very fast manner by clicking on a region of the slide in the navigation window. There are three additional ways to move the stage. We can use the joystick, which provides a sort of intermediate speed of travel. We can click on the border of the live window, which provides a single fast jump in one direction. And we can use the arrow keys on the keyboard. This provides the finest control over the stage movement. The speeds of each of these mechanisms of movement can be controlled by the right-hand side of the live window in this section labeled Speed. Here we can also see that we can customize the cut speed. I'm going to use the joystick to navigate to a region of the slide that does not have any sample to discuss how to optimize the laser micro dissection. In order to check the focus and power of the cut laser, when you're just learning to use the LCM, it's best to practice on a membrane slide without any sample. As mentioned previously, several samples shipped with the LCM system, and one of the membrane slides should last for the testing purposes for the life of the instrument. Membrane slides can be identified by having a rectangular region covering the majority of the slide that is semi-transparent. The slide we have now is one of those samples, so I'll navigate away from the sample to an area of the membrane that is blank. You should still be able to see what appear to be small pores in the membrane. 
any laser capture microdissection session, I would strongly suggest that the first cuts you make are on a region of the membrane slide with a simple square. If the cut made is of good thickness and the cut path travels along the drawn square exactly, you can immediately proceed to your tissue and optimize your cut there. If you're not satisfied with the cut or there is no cut, then you'll need to adjust the laser power and potentially the laser focus. In order to adjust the cut laser, begin by changing the cut type on the main window to simply cut. Now draw a winding path in the live image and start the cut of this element. If you had any other elements drawn, it's best to delete these before starting. As you watch the laser travel along the cut line, you may want to change the speed of the cut to make the process easier for you the first time. You can do that under the Speed menu to the right of the image. With the laser traveling along the element path, the first thing you need to do is see some cutting. If there's no cutting at all, increase the cut laser power. This is done through the slider to the right of the live image labeled Energy, but it's easier to control with the hotkeys Page Up and Page Down. Press the Page Up button until we see some amount of cutting. Once we see some cutting, adjust the focus of the cut laser up or down to attempt to increase the size of the cut. This is best done with the hotkeys Home and End, located immediately beside the Page Up, Page Down on the keyboard. If you're moving the laser more in focus, the apparent laser power should seem to increase as the cut laser op uh, optimally when it's fully in focus. Now that the laser is in a better focus position, reduce the laser power. Repeat this process for focusing and adjusting the power until you have a narrow cut line, and adjusting the focus either up or down reduces the effectiveness of the cut. This indicates that you've completed optimizing the cut laser. You may find that as you move to your tissue, it is necessary to increase the power slightly. Different tissues cut with different efficiencies, but having the cut optimized on the membrane should provide a starting point that's very close to the working conditions for your sample. We will finish this introduction to the laser capture microdissection by discussing sample preparation as it relates to slide types and different laser cut methods. There are two core methods of preparing a sample for laser capture. The first is to use a typical glass slide without a cover slip. In this case, the tissue is catapulted off the slide directly, which only removes a small portion of tissue. Multiple catapult events are then necessary to remove all of the tissue within a region. This cut method is called auto LPC. Alternatively, we can use a closed cut and auto LPC, which will define the boundary of the tissue first with an ablation line before isolating with catapult pulses. Here we can see an example of what the auto LPC process looks like. Using the auto LPC, the fragments of sample will be collected in the capture tube, but will not be visible in the manner that a single large fragment is, as we demonstrated at the beginning of this tutorial. The auto LPC may be done in a line if the membrane regions are to be isolated from tissue, for example. The sample that we initially demonstrated on was prepared using a second type of method. This is a slide that is covered with an inert UV absorbent membrane. This membrane is only attached to the glass slide around the edge of the slide. The effect is that cutting the membrane in the center of the slide, where the sample is typically mounted, allows for a full region to be released from the slide with a single catapult step. This method can provide a slight increase in yield, as the tissue remains intact and a larger fraction of tissue is isolated. The cut method for using a membrane slide is named RoboLPC. In this cut method, the region of interest is cut fully with the exception of a small portion at the start cut at the start point of the cut. This portion is referred to as the bridge, and it works to stabilize the tissue so that it does not fly away from the surface tension that's released once the membrane is cut. An automatic catapult pulse is then applied to the bridge and the tissue region is captured. Alternative forms of cutting, such as joint cut or robo center LPC, are derivatives of this robo LPC function that I encourage you to explore. With that, we've completed an introduction to the use of the Palm Laser Capture Microdissection System. Please look for the accessory documents regarding sample preparation and future tutorials dealing with the use of fluorescence in combination with laser capture.